Whom wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to, to Jesse and Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king amongst his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to, to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which what the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come, and he looked on, on Eliab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not unto his countenance, or on the height of his, of his stature, because I have refused him. Read that verse again. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not unto his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called and Abba. Stop, stop, stop. Hold you to do two things. Go back to verse one. Then I'm going to show you guys something. We're talking, we're doing a serious relationship talk. And in the relationship today, we're dealing with physical attraction. What draws you to a person? What attracts you to a person? What is it that's in them that's connecting with what's in you? What is it about them that is captivating your heart, your mind, your emotions? So read verse 1 really quickly. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? So stop. Saul was the king of Israel, but God removed his spirit from him. God rejected him. And see, God doesn't work like we work. You know, people say, if that relationship didn't work out, you got to take some time, you got to heal, before you get with somebody else. You're not going to find it in the Bible. What God says is, okay, he's fired. Next. Because my work still has to be done and there cannot be vacancy. And so if God made you to be a wife, you don't stop being a wife because one relationship failed. So a lot of people enter into love relationship and they're not armed with the knowledge to succeed in a healthy love relationship because their perspective is off. You are not a whore because you're not going to wait two years to get with another dude. My husband, oh, if, baby, if you die, I'm going to be by myself for a while because it's going to be hard to replace you. I said, the devil is a liar. Right. I need you to remarry quickly. You're used to giving sex on a regular basis. You're used to your needs as a man being made. You cannot be one of these preachers that's out here slinging it. <laughs> Sling. It's not biblical. I didn't make it up. God said it's not good for man to be alone. His needs have to constantly be being met whether I'm dead or alive. So I give my blessing for him to marry quickly. I mean within 30 days because if I die, the covenant with me is dead. Yeah, she said 30 days. She said 30. Why? Have you ever, since you've been with me, gone more than 30 days without sex? Nope. I got natural reasons. If more women thought about their husband's needs, he can't go 30 some days without sex. So why do I put him in that position? To try to prove a point to be that's not biblical. It's not God's will. If God says it's not good for him, he didn't say it's not good for her to be alone. He said it's not good for him to be alone. Let us make and help me for him. That means he needs her. He needs me or somebody like me. Sometimes we hold on to people unnecessarily. Sometimes we don't. We'll see. How many of y'all know that God will bring people in our lives for us to obtain certain things from them? But then when it's time to let them go, we got to let them go. Amen? Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Lynn often says, 
hey, when you let people go, you let people go. Well, the reason why that is, uh, Brother Donnie, is that I was a military kid. So, uh, you know, once I got to know you, uh, it's one of those things, once I got to know you, I couldn't just hold on to you because tomorrow your parents might be shipped off to a different duty station. So le learning how to let people go was easy for me because again, I was in an environment where I couldn't really hold on to people or build long lasting relationships because tomorrow they could be in, they could be in New York while I'm in England, you know, or I could be in North Carolina while you're in Mexico or off in the middle of the Gulf or Mexico somewhere in a, on a boat. And so I couldn't really um, attach myself to people. And sometimes uh, we could try to attach ourselves to people that God is trying to get us to let go. And because those individuals might be hindering us from being able to obtain and to grow and to be able to do those things that God would have us to do. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Labor. You gotta learn. You gotta learn how to let go. How to let go when it's time to let go. When it's time to let go. Because certain relationships, you know, are not good for you. Right. Somebody say amen. 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 Some, amen. So, sometimes the reason why we're not in a new relationship now is because we're still carrying the old people in our spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we see here in the scripture, Saul is still. Uh, excuse me. The prophet Samuel is still carrying Saul in his spirit. And because he's carrying Saul in his spirit, it's hard for Samuel to move on to somebody else that God already had in mind. See, because you're holding on to individuals, you are preventing yourself from moving on to someone God already has in mind for you. But we're holding on to people God is trying to get us to let go of. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? We're holding on to people in our spirit because that God is trying to help us to get rid of because he already has somebody or someone greater in mind. See, as long as she was with trying to date the other eight dudes that was trying to court her, she didn't have all of this. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you're holding on to best friends that were really bullies in your spirit. But because we didn't want to be alone, we wanted to hold on to those people. Actually, sometimes we hold on to girlfriends that, that were not good. That y'all, How many of y'all heard about that young girl that uh, was killed uh, in Mexico? She was holding on to friends that God was trying to get her to get rid of. And, they, and because she held on to those friends, those friends killed her. I want to tag. I want to. I want to go someplace. When you when you talk about, please make sure you're on test. When you talk about, um, when you talk about love relationship um, and physical attraction, it's it's imperative that we identify who God has sent versus who is assigned by Satan. Yes. Because I'm still stuck in verse 1. Stuck in verse 1. It's the first one. It's lower. First thing God said is, why are you still crying over this dude? I already told you I fired. Wow. That's good, girl. That's deep. Fill your horn, your horn with oil. Go to Bethlehem and anoint this new king that I've chosen. We gravitate towards men who look like kings in our sight, but they're not kings in, according to God's standard. And I know only one that can birth out a man. Here's the benefit to a female prophet meeting a man who doesn't know his verb, his value. God sends prophets to anoint kings. God sends prophets to anoint kings. So if you are a female prophet, your womb is already anointed to birth a king. But the problem is the female prophets get caught up on how they look. Go down to verse 6. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm not making this up. Everything I'm teaching y'all is biblical. I'm just opening your eyes to what the word is really saying. Read verse 6 and 7. 
And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab. He being the prophet Samuel who was sent with the horn of oil to anoint the next king of Israel. Watch what he says now. He's standing looking at this fine, tall, muscular man because all of those sons were good looking, the Bible says. So he's looking at him. Watch what he says next. That he looked unto Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Stop. You anointed because you fine? You anointed because you good looking? The devil is a liar. But because... Kings had to be mighty in valor and fierce in battle and war. He assumed because he's tall and he's muscular and he's athletic and he's fit and he's strong. He looks like a king. It's, he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. In other words, you are the most impressive thing I've seen. You must be it. Y'all never seen a man so fine. You be like, oh, Lord Jesus. You did that, God. Your hands are mighty. Mighty are the works of your hands, Lord. And just full of demons. Yeah. Booty is the community booty. Sleeping with men and women. Can't be faithful for nothing. Can't commit to nothing. Money is his God. Is that what you really want for your children? Or do you want a man that's a family man? You want somebody that's going to be able to sit down with you for Christmas dinner? You want somebody that's going to help you with your kids' homework. You want somebody that's going to wake up and feed the baby at night and let you sleep one day after the <laughs> But if he's working 60 hours to get bread, he's going to need you to let him sleep. That's right. Let me sleep. Continue to read. Start over with verse 6 and read straight through unless I stop you, please. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not unto his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. The Lord refused him. Say so he's fine, but he's been refused by God. He's fine. He's fine, but he has been refused by God. So if God refuses to choose him, why would you? I'm so impressed with her, how she handles herself with men, because this young man made his interest known in Mama. I said, I ain't your mama. He said, you're going to be my mother-in-law. He said, I want your daughter. I said, baby, you tell him the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him the wrong one. You're going to have to tell her. Well, she always so busy. And she always working. And she always is. And, she always, and it's going to be that way. She's a hard worker. Find <laughs> your day. I said, I said, I can't make the decision. She got to make the decision. To myself, he ain't it. You won't have enough courage to step up and say, she can't stand a cow. She can't stand a cow. So I can tell you, you got a good little chance. And you be like, I ain't scared. I'm pretty comfy. I ain't nervous. So you still here and say, yes, ma'am. Okay, we, we got something to work with. I, I, I want your daughter. I'm just trying to figure out a way to approach you. Time gone. This one right here, she is not stopping. Your mind ain't made up. You don't know. You ain't more. Okay, I'm going to give you time. Good day. It's a good day. I, I don't want no friendship. I don't want no. I would at least be friends with the man. She was like, ain't no room. I know what God said. I ain't got a room for no guy friends. My husband not going to be okay with me having cool guy friends. So if you see me making these relationships, I'm going to be friends with my husband. He's going to be my guy friend. Mm. Told me something. I had a million guy friends. So watch this. She said, I got a brother. <laughs> so watch this. Continue to read. Because now, the lion was fine and muscular and tall and looked the part. Continue to read. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Stop, ladies. Stop looking at what's on his outward appearance. Men, I know they fine. I know the tickle bitties. I know the, the, you know, the BBL. I know. I know. It don't matter. They serve the same purpose. Men are moved by what they see. Women are moved by what they hear. Stop making your assessment based on what it looks like. What and make it like. based on what it is. When he can't, because I know I'm subject to choose wrong. I had 126 things on my list. So I was attracted. Y'all know what I was attracted to. Big, black is, ain't nothing here black enough. 
arms still not black enough. All I wanted was big arms. Barely could be out of here. Because that don't bother me. I need some guns. And I like both hands. So picture, <laughs> fat out. She, she My exes all she look like, like that. Dudes. You know how the prison dudes work all of this out. So I'm just saying, coming and through that, they're going to be right like now. They come in the room, how do you think they're doing stuff? They work all this out and they look like pencils. That's what she likes. She likes the prison dude. Call it what you want to. Prison dude strong. Uh, they could pick up this 241. You understand me? Uh, so what? So, uh, so what's this? I saw that movie, Baby Boy, and that became my standards. I'm going to need that body out. You know, and so, uh, you know. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is too much, too much relationship. It is in here. I don't y'all like the bunny hop, but okay, in the church you can't talk about it. They can't keep that real. Brother, can you handle it? Can you maneuver this way? Because it's not going to work out if you over here wobbling. it. But it's all muscle right here. You... She like that prison dude with the twist. I like what you got now. I doubt what that what I like that then. And so, physical attraction can get us in trouble because we make up our mind based on carnal measures. Can somebody say carnal measures? Carnal measures. When marriage is a spiritual union. We together? Yes, sir. He was talking about, y'all was talking about how I upgraded him. But we got sure did. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. See, when, for, listen, ladies, you know you a good when you up, when the man say you upgraded me. A good one. A good one. <laughs> when that man can say, look, bruh, where I'm at right now, if it wasn't for this woman being in my life, I wouldn't be here. You're good. He had never owned a home. He had never owned a luxury I'm car. Talking all around. He didn't upgrade. have the cars. And all have, around. But he upgrade. was with a dust muffin. He wasn't with a quality. Somebody home. say all around upgrade. All around upgrade. See, you, even my character had to come good. up when I was connected with the he right woman. He showed me. Listen, because because. When you, fellas, when you're connected with the right woman, ladies, when you're connected with the right man, your character has to improve. Your mindset about life has to improve. You can't think the same way. You can't uh, do things the same as you used to do it. You can't live like you used to live, Ashlyn, when you're with the right individual. They make you want to be better. You make them want to be better. But when you're with the wrong or you're connected with the wrong individuals, what tends to happen is one is going to drag the other one down. Somebody's going to lead somebody somewhere. And if you deal with a man who's mediocre in his relationship with God, if he's mediocre in his love with his creator, don't you know you can only reap mediocrity in his love for you? Why expect a man to give you more than he would to the God that created him? Tell your neighbor, she's stupid. She's stupid. The Bible calls them silly women. They won't compromise. But compromise comes with comfort outside the will of God. So when you're attracted to him, and you know, if you stop looking for a man in a BMW car. Look for a man BMW, a black man already worshiping. You want somebody that's already worshiping. Look for a black man. Y'all get connected working. with these men when you go to church. Oh man, I work on something. Hold on, hold you on. know God's not a priority. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Let's not skip some. Let's not skip the basics. I gotta talk to my young, my ladies up here, ladies, but for my single ladies, let's not skip the basics. If he ain't, if he ain't working. Skip him. See, I don't agree with that, but y'all know how your daddy is. <laughs> if he ain't, I'm, I'm, listen now. If he ain't working, skip him. He ain't got to be working the greatest job, but if he ain't working something, skip him. It's a level of responsibility that men we have. We have as men <clears throat> that we don't want to always rely on people if they're real men. If, we, if they ain't real men, they, it, they're going to be mooching. They're going to be moochers. They're going to drain you, drain your account, drain your gas tank. Let's not, uh, listen, it was a standard, the minimum standard, Ashley, I, when I was your age, if I wanted to date a girl like you, the minimum standard was I had to have a place of my own, I had to have a car, and I had to have a job. The minimum standard, I couldn't stay with my mama, I could, uh, cousins was acceptable. And you had to meet the family. And that was it, minimum standard. I couldn't even date. I, I saw this girl on the bus. I was going to my, ma'am, I was going to the bus, going to work. 
I, I got a job. I got a place of my own. I was on the bus going to work. Saw this fine woman on the bus. I called myself talking to her, man. You very beautiful. I she was like, yeah, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Is it possible that we can go out on a date? No. Where we going? On the bus. You on the bus like me? You on the bus like me. How we going on a date? I, 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 I just walked away because she was right. I couldn't. I, I didn't have she was right. Say. She, just, hold she on. was right. This is where we differ. Look at who he is. She missed a blessing. If a man is a hard worker, whether he has a job or not, when you meet him, because life circumstances happen, this is what I teach the wives. Now I can't tell him what not to say to his daughter. It was just broke down. I did have a car. It was broke down. I didn't take up when we got together. You you were like Fred Flintstone, Barney. Drop my car. And I didn't mind, I know what I had. He had an old Volkswagen. It was broke down. I never rode it. It was not a Volkswagen. It was a Subaru. Get it right. Whatever it was, I never ride. It was ugly. Sister, Holloway. That thing was fast. He never took me anywhere. It was too much of a wreck. Drag racing that thing on the highway. That thing was fast. I was about to say drag these. That car was raggedy. We couldn't go anywhere in it. So that was my baby. Don't, don't Here's the deal though. Long. Here's the deal she though. The value of the car didn't change the value of the man. Right. Right. I don't want y'all to dismiss him. People have gone through hard times. Check that heart. If he's got God's heart, I don't want to make some money. I was, I was the breadwinner when we got together. He was like, I can't be with a woman like you because I don't make enough money. He makes $7.50. I said, quit that little job. I got you. I'll take care of you. Baby. Sure did. Quit that little job. Stay home. He stayed home for a whole year. Two years. I wonder why he quit his job. Because we were stroking and seeing it no good to me. I ain't proud of it, but that's why I hired brother. Work, put them same eight hours in. They give you something. I'll give you something that hour. Come work for me. We go live. So, uh, so you're yeah, Ashley. Go come on. I yeah, work. No you cool I work. You ain't gotta go push the clock for that man. Work right. I'm gonna make sure. Cause if this seven fifty that I was paying your little bills, let me just pay that little bill. And you just keep giving three. I'm just saying, listen, listen, I don't, I don't promote that. I don't encourage that, but don't ask no questions. Don't want the I'm, truth to can't, can't, uh, let's let's deal with facts. You know, if there was one thing out of a whole relationship that we regret that we regret, sex and sin. That was the one thing. Cause it felt so good at the time, but it that came with thing. so much, so much stuff, so much that could have been avoided, so much if we would have just been God's way. It, it was so. Well, I, I can't. I can't express that enough. It was so much pain and suffering. I would have pain never, as a result, of done it. We would have never done it. Cause you bring in whoredom into your relationship. You bring in, you bring in distrust. Accusations, jealousy, insecurity. I got pregnant out of wedlock. I miscarried my baby. You bring in all that stuff. God is not going to bless your mess. And we both knew better. But that flesh get the best of us. Just like you get the best of you. That's why I'm saying you got to have those minimum standards. You, you, you got to be... The word of God says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. What do you believe? What do you believe? And find out what his convictions are, what her convictions are. If she's trying to throw that thing in a circle, you a man of God, you seek it. <laughs> to be inside God's will. You don't want a girlfriend, you want a wife. She can be a knife. Because I promise you, if he'll pull it out, and he'll drop it off in your drawers and y'all not married, he'll drop it off in the drawers of the next woman that he's not married to. A man has that has moral standards, his standards are his standards. And either he's a man of God, saving himself from marriage to do it God's way, or he's a man who want to know God, who his penis is leading him. It used to be me. I was like, I can't get married if I don't know what he's working with in the bedroom. That's why I used to be, who wants to be married for the rest of, because I know I'm not a cheater, so we get together, I'm going to be stuck with you the rest of my life. I want to know. And God say, either you trust me or you don't. And I had to humble myself. And I now that I'm married to who God has for me, and I did have sex with him and see her lives are blessed now, but I right. believe we got a fraction right. of what we could have had right. if we would have did it his way. So now, I don't want to spend a lot of time with that. Go to verse 9. Plus, uh, I'm before I'm sorry. verse 9. Plus, there's one more thing I want to include with that, too. If I don't think we would have been through it as long as we did. 
we, I don't think we would have suffered all time. I don't think we would have suffered as long as we did if we would have did it that way. I don't because we spent years. It wasn't just a few months, y'all. It was years of having to try to overcome those things that we had to suffer through as a result of those few days. Years of, of having to uh, get relationships right, previous relationships. I have children from my previous marriage. I had to spend years Man, to get that right. And I had never dealt with baby mama drunk. Me neither. So, I, you know, all of the crazy came out and all of that foolishness. You know, it, 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 the pain level that we had to overcome during those years was just, I don't know any other way to say it. Uh, the reason why I'm saying it to you is because I, I don't want y'all to think that we're just up here being hypocrites. Right. Uh, the reason why we're saying this to you is because we want you to understand that the reason why we're here telling you what we're telling you is because we don't want you to suffer like we suffer. We don't want you to have to go through the hoops that we jump through. We don't want you. We don't want you to have to deal with the legal ramifications that came as a result of our actions. We don't want you to have to suffer the financial repercussions that came as a result of a few days of action. You understand what I'm saying? So it's good. that's why I'm telling you. That's why I want to make sure that you guys understand that we stand here as witnesses. Letting you know that it's, it's important to get those standards in place and hold to those standards as much as you can because that one moment of weakness can set you back so much, so far, so so fast for so long. Y'all understand? Okay, and let me just say this. Go ahead, baby. When we got together, I was just looking at the here and now. I wasn't really looking at the no, other thing, baby, because it's in your family. I was, I was... I was not looking at Yeah. And him. Um does he know what his calling is? His calling. I don't think he do. Do you know what God is called him to do? He's absolutely going to preach and teach the gospel. But I believe he tours to play instruments, specifically the drums. Does he have, have an interest in music and instruments? Yeah, God just yeah, God just spoke it to me when I saw him just then. It distracted me, but I believe he's going to be a minister. And, and in this house, there's no such thing as a junior anointing. And so the moment we realize they're anointed, we put their hands to work, moving in what God has assigned them to do. And that's the reason why. She's been playing drums professionally since she was about eight. Yeah, yeah. eight. And he'll be nine in January. Okay. Obey God concerning it. Donnie! Yes. He told me why I'm <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't tell me. I told her that I saw you playing drums for God. And she just confirmed it. She prophesied. <laughs> Why are you telling my business? <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely anointed to lead. He's a leader. But, 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 but uh, I mean, I got distracted when the Daddy. baby was singing. Uh, what about you? You just I'm sorry. Come on to verse 9. I'll come back when the Lord brings it to my remembrance. Read verse 9 because I want to show you how many. Now, y'all saw him talk about the liar and how fine he was. He was like, sure, it is supposed to be. You ever seen a man so fine he hit on your ass and you'd be like, I know that's from God right here. <laughs> this must be the blessing. And God said, told the prophet, no, that's not it. Because he's going to read. Then Jesse made Shema. Wait, go to verse 8. We skip one. Then, then Jesse called Abinadad and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. So now there's two that were fine and attractive, that were in the place where God said the next king would be. But he told the prophet, mm -hmm, You're still looking in the wrong direction. I know it looks good to you. That ain't it. That boy fine. That boy that stadium that wants you, that boy, he, 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 he was fine. Come on. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen, chosen this. this. 
Look, what's that? So now that's three or four. Three. Continue. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. How many? Seven. And Samuel said unto Wait. Him, because in the church they'll teach you just sit down with one man. They'll teach you that in the church. It's not biblical. You keep searching and you keep vetting until God says yes. I wasn't feeling no. He wasn't the only one interested in, interested in me. If you ain't gonna pay the price, I said good day. Don't let these religious beliefs. Oh, the church will view you as a whore. Church ain't gotta marry you, brother. Man does. And they, they want to think about me. Yes, I was at the steakhouse with Reverend Winnie last week, and yes, you see me in, in, in go karts on the date with Reverend Scott. And tomorrow I'm gonna be with Pastor Williams. Tell whoever gonna marry me, marry me. If you ain't wife me and life me, you are not. If you like it, then you gotta put a ring on. So that happens. Uh oh, oh, I'm single. You know what I'm saying? Y'all stop. Don't be afraid to date. Because a man has got his mind made up, he ain't gonna let you date long. He made his intentions long. He ain't wanna date. He ain't wanna do. I've been praying for this right here is what I've been praying for. I want you. I believe you're mine. What does it cost me to have you? I can end that list. 126 things. He checked it out, and I was like, he was just like him. I was like, it's a lot, you know what I'm saying to myself. Now what you gonna do? He was like, because on my, my list, one of the things on my list, Ashley, I want a man with college education. Because I made good money, I didn't want to be broke. We ain't got people out of control, but we can't be in the projects. I don't believe in it no more. I grew up in the project. I ain't no gold digger. I just can't be with a broke white man. So watch this. He goes through the process, and he says, it was on Tuesday. He said, well, I got to get my college degree. I said, you think I'm going to wait two years or four years for you to get a degree? I said, yeah, yeah, Boy, bye. Yeah. He said, all I need is one credit to get oh, my I degree. We had that conversation one semester. We had the conversation on Tuesday, Thursday. He was enrolled in college. He was. I knew he was serious about doing what it was going to take to get with me. So that made me stop and say, don't let me dismiss him because he is actively taking steps to move towards becoming Mr. Right. Now you gotta work with that. He was working on Sundays. He was like, I'm gonna talk to my boss. Um, get my schedule changed. I said, well, what you gonna do if they don't change your schedule? You said, I'm gonna get a new job. <laughs> I'll quit. Cause I'm gonna be inside the will of God. You're a once in a lifetime woman and I'm not gonna let you go. Took me too long to find you. So I knew he was serious, but I still stuck to my timeline. Are we together? Attraction will sabotage covenant because you'll find yourself connected to somebody who really doesn't value you enough to pay the price to have you. Yes. You want somebody who's willing to invest because everything, every change that I required of him to make was causing him to come up in God. It wasn't just carnal stuff on my emotional whims. No, this is stuff you need to do as a man of God. You need to have your credit cleaned up. As a man of God, you need to be able to buy a house. As a man of God, you need to be able to. We went to that Ben's dealership, but he they delivered it two, three weeks ago. He went in there, he signed. How much did you pay down for the car, babe? Not a dollar. Not a dollar. He couldn't do that when he met me. So good. Go get what you want and not give them a dollar. We're not paying nothing now when we bought that. <laughs> if I could give it somebody else yeah, come. Would give me but, uh, but Let somebody yeah. teach you. <laughs> it would give me nothing but men. Complimentary tea. Complimentary <laughs> tea. You got it? Complimentary You better marry somebody that's going to uh, uh, life you and, and wife you. I mean, uh, uh, upgrade your life. Because he upgraded me as a woman of God, too. I sure did. Now, don't let it seem. Oh, no, he did. Once I, he did. I sure did. He did. Because those areas where I was completely out of control, he pulled me straight down. I had never submitted to a man's authority. Because I ain't going to follow just no anything. you got to be able to hear from God and be in control of your own emotions before you can check me in mind. So it was hard. So now, look, God was rejected. Seven sons. Do you see the, the prophet saying, uh, well, guess that's it. No. The prophet saying, this can't be all because I know what God said. Where are the rest of your kids? And if you continue to read, the Bible says, he said, well, I got one more, but you probably don't want him. He out there tending to the sheep. 
Continue to read. Yeah. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. I ain't going to sit down. Go read, baby. I know the story. Read. For we will not sit down till he cometh hither. Hold on, for those that I won't read from the King James, she know that you should have been reading from the Amplified. Because them hithers and thithers, I don't read none of that. But let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you what he said. He was like, I know this ain't this can't be all your children because God sent me here. God told me the next king was here, and I he has rejected everything that you bought before me that you thought was good enough. It's gotta be some more way in. He was like, Well, ain't but one more. I got one more. He's out in the field, tending to the sheep, <laughs> crying the stank. You, you want that? He said, go get him. I ain't finna sit down. I ain't finna eat, you know, because the biblical days, people come to your house, you give him something to eat, you give him something to drink, you sit down, you're like, you, you know, you're welcome, right? right. He, he said, we ain't finna do none of that until I see everybody. He go to get him. Yeah. Now watch this. He see him coming up the field. He see him coming. And God says, that's the one. Anoint him. That's the one. Women, y'all are prophets. Even a man's not anointed when you meet him, you have the authority by God to anoint him king. Well, if y'all can get this, well, if y'all can get this, if you get a man like David that's like, I, I ain't even know I was a king till I connected with the prophet, and the prophet anointed me king, and the prophet took me from where I was living, and the prophet elevated me to a high place of influence and wealth. Okay. We got it. Keep on. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's too good to me and y'all ain't. And he sent and brought them and brought him in. Now he was ready and withal of, of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. Oh no, all that all that, that all that biblical stuff is he was super fine, he was good looking, and he was sexy. <laughs> and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. You got it. So See, listen, the, the thing that the thing what brought him to this moment was there was an image that was in the minds of those looking that was doing the searching, but nobody consulted God as to who this person is. And so they had to go through that process because God had to get them past what they thought in their minds it was supposed to be. Let me help y'all. This was not what I wanted. I don't she is, I was certainly not what she wanted. Okay. You she are told now. you. She told you what she was looking for. She had he had to be big good, big on, black as cold. You got a little belly now, you ain't got love when I met you. A little belly. Little bony and scrubby like guy, a race. But the guy yeah. she was dating had a big belly. I had a little bit of it. That's all. So okay. But when she, the type of woman that I was looking for had to be light skinned, five nine to six feet tall, athletic, the whole nine yards. Athletic. athletic. Yeah, I was nice. athletic at the time. Yeah. So what I wanted and what I needed was two different things. And see, God doesn't give you, the Bible says, he shall supply all of your needs. Philippians 4, 19. Somebody, somebody said, said his riches. Somebody said that with me. God shall supply all of my needs. According to, according to his, his riches. riches. In glory in Christ let me Let me help you with the riches part. His riches is really his standards. Right. What's God is giving him. you with something that you need according to your standards. Is according to his standard. So God shall supply what I need according to his standard, Ashley, so that when I when I go through this life, I'm not hindered or weighted down by the stuff that I wanted that was according to my standards. Because there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it's death. Come on, I wanna we got a few more minutes. I want you to Read, continue to read, because I got one more thing I want to cover for y'all that got these five in. Then we can break it down and get on out of here. Come on. Then Samuel took, took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. 
And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward. And wait, wait. Forward. And the spirit of the Lord came upon the one that God anointed from that day forward. But what happened to the currently reigning king, Saul? Read. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Uh-huh. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The spirit of the Lord did what? Departed from Saul. You mean he can be a king and the spirit of the Lord can reject him? Mm. You read it right there. So what do you do when he once was anointed but he isn't anymore? Mm. Y'all stop getting with these men who used to be anointed. Because if the spirit of the Lord leaves a man then the spirit of Satan begins to torment and influence the man. The Bible calls them mind-blinding spirits. And so you have these men that abuse women. You have these men that are whoremongers. You have these men that are users. You have these men that are lust-driven and influenced by their penises because the spirit of the Lord is no longer resting on them. Continue to read. I want y'all to see. Because there's a torment for him. Some of y'all are connected with men who are mentally tormented. Come on. Read, read, read. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil, sp an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil what? Spirit. From who? The Lord. Read the statement again. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Stop. So people can say, God don't create evil. God is the creator of all things. You, did I make it up or did y'all read it right there? But an evil spirit from the Lord. Read it again. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. This man can be very anointed. And for whatever reason, if he moves outside the will of God or God removes the anointing from him, he's now troubled by an evil spirit that God permits or God allows because he has been fired, but he's still working the job. He's still working. You got men who are still wearing the title man of God, but they are no longer a priest to God. And you're connecting with a man who's not connected with God, and you're wondering why all you're reaping out of the relationship is hell. Because hell is his home. Oh, you're wondering why all you're getting out of the relationship with homegirl is hell. Hell is her home. An evil spirit is tormenting her. But watch how the king comes in because those who serve the king uh, you know they, they're like Lord you uh, are king you getting kind of rough there's some wicked spirits overtaking you you having these mad spells and these outbursts and it, it's not changing it's every day now it's not based on somebody triggering you you wake up evil wicked angry you, you go to sleep why don't we bring in a minstrel to play for you to sing to you, to, 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 to soothe you, to calm your atmosphere. Ladies, I want y'all to learn from this. When you have a king, it's important that you know how to govern the king's atmosphere. It's important that it's not about you. It's important that you make sure that his environment is where it needs to be. He needs peace. He needs to be soothed. He needs calm. It can't all be about what you got going on. So these women that serve the king like, let us get something to make this try to calm you and serve your spirit go ahead and read say verse 14 15 something read verse 15 and Saul's servant said unto him Saul's who? servants so now you can't have a king if you're not willing to serve now why y'all attracted y'all want these great men Great men want to be served. No, I told them to be servants. Great men want to be served. That's why y'all see these big uh, athletes and all of them, they go get these little crazy little exotic girls who serve them long enough to get them. Look at Kevin Hart's wife. Then he on his own. You look at her. Then you look at him. She looked up at that man. I met Kevin Hart. Y'all see the picture on my Facebook. Kevin Hart is this tall. They don't exaggerate my hair on heels. But he came right here on me with heels. Whatever you see the height on that picture, me and him was in the elevator. Those people behind us are his security guards. He's really that small. That woman would not. She your height. She would not date him. And he wasn't rich. Serve who's 
weeds, you're not willing to meet on turn. If you look at marriage as an opportunity, if you don't need to be mad, it's not going to work. But if you look at marriage as, this is somebody I can see myself serving, whose needs I can commit to meeting for the rest of my life, it's going to work. I need his needs consistently. He doesn't need what other men need. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, no, I'm not the fucking do what I need to do. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So he wasn't telling us, they weren't saying, let's get somebody to sing you. He said, let's get a minstrel to play for you. Now, who do y'all think was chosen? The one that God anointed. Sometimes God will have you serving in the place you're anointed to rule in. Don't let no man rule over you if you haven't seen him serve another man first. If he can't submit to another man's authority, he's not going to submit to God. If he can't serve another man's vision, he's not going to serve you. Men, stop looking at the booty and the cootie. If she can't submit to another woman's authority, she's not going to submit to yours. The Bible says that he was tormented. And the people around him said, let's get somebody that's going to serve you. Whose needs are you focused on soothing? What king are you serving? What are you doing to accommodate the atmosphere of your king? When you look at a man, don't just look at what he can do for you. You got to check, what can I do for him long term? Because wherever he's at right now, if he's not acknowledging, okay, that is where I was. I didn't have understanding. But now I see where I'm supposed to be. And this is the direction we're going to move in. Ashlyn, you're going to be stuck. If he doesn't acknowledge the need for God, you're going to be stuck in a godless relationship. So now the question is, um, if nothing in the relationship changes, will you be happy? I saw that baby dancing with these streamers. Streamers. What's that movie with the girl that cursed so bad? The little pretty girl that always mimics and the best. What's the girl? Akilah and the bee. What's the girl? Kiki Palmer. I saw her. Like, you know, tap the leg and spelling, like to a cadence. She's very academic. She's very yeah, smart. smart. She just went to a spelling bee in crack and she didn't make it. She went all the way through and got to the end. I just saw her in a spelling bee. I just saw her. I've never seen y'all before, but you know I'm a real prophet. You know I didn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know y'all, so you know God has to be revealing it to me. And I literally just saw her spelling. I literally just saw her in a spelling bee. And so you won't make it, don't you give up? Because I saw you on a national level in a spelling bee, just like that movie. Go back and watch that movie, Akilah and the Bee. Because I saw you doing exactly, following that entire traje trajectory. Those same steps. So when you get a spelling coach, don't give your spelling coach hell. Be obedient, be easy, and be cooperative. You understand me? You know what I thought you said. Be looking over there at your mama. My head is stuck. Push me in your forehead and ask Jesus to forgive me. All right. Here's the last thing I'm going to say, you guys. Physical attraction is important. And it's somewhat necessary. But you got to vent the rest. You got to vent the rest of the process. Y'all hear me? Don't just get caught up on how good they look. You know what it's going to cost to be with you. If they're willing to pay the price, okay. It ain't no that way. <laughs> ain't no test drive in a car. You ain't finna put an album out on my car. You want it? Buy it. This car bought it. You ain't no test drive. You got to pay for a full commitment. I deliver the car, but I'm going to need that money up out you. Yeah, if he just want to rent a car, he need to go to Enterprise. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, my name is not Alan Moore Hurts, you understand me? Y'all got it? 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 Y'all got it
Google your feet. Y'all keep my baby, grandbabies in your prayers. I saw them dispersing almost like like an army going different places. Yeah. Doing the will of the Lord, but not together in one unit. This one in this area, this one in this area, this one in this area. And, and so when God is doing something, we have to pray and keep them planted and keep them covered. Let's keep them covered. Let's keep them covered. I called the crazy up there because I saw her standing on the stage with her eyes closed and she had an earbud in her ear and she was worshiping. She was standing, but there was a there was a stool there. The guitar was on the stool. But she was standing up and she had that earpiece in her ear and her eyes were closed and she was worshiping and there were a bunch of people around her. So I got to teach her how to sing prophetically and how to hear what God is saying and block out the sound of man. So I covered her ears. You know, I used to do that with Sherry. I don't have to do that anymore now. Now Sherry can pick up uh, prophetic sounds. Right, right. Sherry, you took us in today. You took us in. You took us in today. And so, um, I want you guys to get this. If you're with your partner, your spouse, your mate, somebody's trying to date, grab by the hand. Because relationships are not easy. They come with challenges and they come with mandated change. You're not. 
not going to have to go get them. They're going to bring them to you. Come here. Daddy, come. Listen. You have my word. My husband is there's nothing perverse about him. But I want you, my husband, to just wrap his arms around you. Because God just showed me she's been crying for that. She wants to be in her husband's arms. Just let my husband hug you. And I need you to envision it as your own husband. Because it's not going to be long before you feel this. I know you just want that. She ain't been crying out about sex. She ain't been crying out about money. She wants to be in her husband's arms. She misses him, the actual man, his presence that support that family. I see you thinking your family is uncovered because he's not there. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we release wholeness because he is a man of God. He is a man of faith, regardless of what the enemy has spoken, regardless of the mistakes of his past. We thank you now that wholeness shall come, peace in her mind and in her spirit. It has been a struggle and it has been a frustration. And oh, I heard a financial strain. But any authority in Jesus' name, those things shall be did as a result of her obedience and his obedience. Stay on your face. Stay on your face. God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. He said he heard your cry. He heard your cry. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God has not
Tonight it starts at 6 30. It's your show. Ground back there.
globally, yeah. you can text GIVE to 833-921-6610, and you can select GIVE one time, or, or you, you can set up... Record giving if you want to tie, you can do that as well. Yes, so you can set up your time if it's consistent, but if it's not, you can just select one time and go ahead and make sure you're entering the proper amount each time, or if you just want to be guilty of consistently giving on that weekly basis so you don't have to go ahead and worry about it and set up the reoccurring option so that it can give a consistent amount of whatever Lord needs you on top of that you can do. Baby, can come up here and give me a hug. 